Um, first of all, I, would, I just wondered if you could tell me a little bit of um, background information. So, um, when were you diagnosed, for example, with the MS? Um, I was diagnosed in 1996, right. but um, around about 20 years ago, I was diagnosed with optic neuritis, which was really the onset of it, I think. Okay. Um, and ha you presumably tried lots of different treatments from sort of mainstream medicine, if you like before thinking of the stem cell treatment? Maybe? Well, no, not really. The, um, to be honest, there was nothing offered to me. I've never been offered any disease and modifying drug by any neurologist. Mm -hmm. So what was it that first made you think that you might try the stem cells? Oh, I read an article, um, which would have been 2005, um, the lady in Liverpool who had the treatment, mm -hmm. and it was the, the headlines which caught my eye. My, it was something like my little boy cried when he saw me walk and having a son myself who's never seen me walk it struck a chord with me so I read her story thought it was fantastic and started researching from there on the internet and did you come across this company ACT first or Dr Trussell first How ACT was? first and then uh, but in the end I think you told me yesterday that you um, you couldn't you couldn't make it work with ACT? No, they were, I think they were running into a bit of trouble and they couldn't give a definite date and they were, at one point they was operating or take, or doing the treatment on board a ship in the Irish Sea so it all sort of went a bit wrong there and a friend of mine who travelled with me for the treatment, she booked us um, into Trussell's clinic. So this was roughly when that you went for your... We actually went for the treatment in August 2006. Okay. So um, that would have been roughly around the time that we did our first broadcast. Did you did you see? Yeah, that, that was just you? after I'd had my treatment, actually, right. when he was first exposed. Yeah, and so tell me about the um, the trip to Rotterdam, and just tell me a little bit about what that was like. Um, it must have been quite hard for you to get there. Yeah, I mean, it, getting onto a plane is never easy, but they have like these lift things that take you up. So it was a short, very short flight. Um, went straight to the hotel. Um, I think the next day he wanted us to go to a place called Eindhoven for Aquatillus treatment, which we couldn't get, we couldn't get to. Don't worry, we'll carry on. Yeah. Because um, the trains are like double-decker buses, mm. and they're all stepped. We couldn't get up there on wheelchairs. So from there, we went back to the hotel where I emailed Trussell and explained we couldn't get onto the train to Eindhoven. And then he emailed me back, as he always did, and um, asked myself and my friend to go to the clinic that afternoon for a placenta stem cell injection, which we had done in our left thigh. So 1996 was the actual multiple sclerosis that you suspect that was coming Just on after my mum died, actually. Oh, wow. Okay. Can you think back to August 2006 and think and, and tell me what what it was that that really was driving you to try the stem cell approach hope desperation and when you're desperate you want to try anything and I just want my son to see me walk I just wanted some quality of life and you know I read about this lady in Liverpool and it, I spoke to her I spoke to her husband they advertised it a lot in the MSRC magazine, the bi-monthly magazine. He seems to be in there all the time. And everything sounds so good. Okay. So thinking back to um, the summer of 2006, can you remember what it, what it was that was driving you just to, to try this treatment? Yeah, it was well, basically the desperation and hope and thinking, quite wrongly now, but thinking there was something out there to help me because I wanted to see my, my son to see me walk. I was, when you're desperate, you just try anything. And now, four years later, when you've heard so much about what he was doing, what was behind some of his treatments, um, what, what for you um, has been the most shocking part of it? No, and he's injected me with bovine serum and he knew what he was doing. I can't understand or I can't believe anybody could do that to another person. He knew it wasn't for human use. He knew it wasn't for use on animals. Yet he injected it into people. So 
of my fear now will be for the rest of my life that I might get CJD. So just to be absolutely clear on, on that part of it, so this is this, the, this is a regenerescent... That's right, yeah. Right. So um, as far as I can tell, that, that bit is for human use, <laughs> this, this live cell therapy. But it is, as it says on, the, on all the material, it's bovine brain spinal cord material. That's right, yeah. So is it, is it really, did he tell you what he was injecting you with? No, absolutely not. No, he, um, I first of all, I had a bag um, going through me via a drip. Well, he said at the time it was vitamin B. He's denied that since, but I was told it was vitamin B. Then um, I had an injection in my arm and about six quick jabs in succession in the back of my neck. Um, and as he went to inject my arm, his words were, welcome these stem cells into your body. And how do you feel now, um, four years later? Did you see any sign of improvement? <laughs> no, far from it. And do you think um, that he should have told you more about what he was doing? Absolutely. He shouldn't have done it anyway. I mean, he shouldn't not, no way of been injecting that into a person. But, yeah, we were, we, were, we were told and we were paying for umbilical cord stem cell, not bovine serum. Nobody would want bovine serum in their body. He wouldn't. Neither would his wife or children, I don't think. So, now I've got that. No, I worry. Every time I'm, I'm here to nurture and love my son, I'm scared when I kiss my son now. I'm terrified, I think. If I cut myself, I bleed very much because I've got a blood disorder now. And I worry that my son might think, get in contact with something from me. I don't know. I don't know what's doing into my body. And it's scary. And um, you've been to the GMC hearing, as with uh, other patients, yeah. and they've told their stories as well. And you've probably read about those as well. How, um, how do you feel about him and him as a doctor? He's not a doctor in my eyes. I can't call him a doctor. He's a con man. He's wicked, he's evil, and I hate him for what he's done. It's all, I, I don't think there are very many words to explain him, but he's a con man. He's not at all compassionate as he claims to be, which is a load of old rubbish. He doesn't know what compassion means. He's just a con man, greedy, money orientated. Um. So we're slightly sort of guessing what's going to happen here, but um, it would seem from the evidence that there's a strong chance that he'll be struck off, and that's what the GMC uh, lawyer has asked for. Um, would that be a fair outcome, do you think? Tell me what you would like to, to see happen. I want him struck off worldwide, and I think he should serve a very non-prison sentence, because in my eyes, he's done, for example, if a person who has AIDS has sex with another person and they know they've got AIDS, they can contaminate that person and they will serve time in prison for that. In my eyes, he's done exactly the same thing. So for you, it was that he had information that he didn't give to you that was the Absolutely, real yeah. problem. Do you want to just tell me? How yeah, I mean, he knew. He knew all along what he was injecting. He knew it was an umbilical cord stem cell. Um, the rubbish that I had like, leading up to the treatment, like to have all my, my teeth, I had to have my, my fillings removed. And I'm still suffering now, like four and a half years on. Just because it would make the treatment better, it would work better. It wasn't going to work, was it? And it was bovine serum, it wasn't a stem cell.